also turn on, I'll turn on live captions as well. Okay, so we've commenced recording and now I'll just go back to sharing the PowerPoint. Okay, so welcome to um, Applied Research Incorporating the Boyer Framework short course information session. Um, there's a website on this particular short course on the Voxel Institute website, and there are hyperlinks in there as well and um, information for you. Um, just some housekeeping is um, if you could mute your microphones when not contributing to conversations, please, that would be appreciated. Um, there are, is a PDF version of this presentation with hyperlinks for you to additional information and participants can turn on the closed captioning feature during this session. Also, after the session, um, I'll download a transcript um, for you to review in your own time as well. Um, and also, if you're not able to download a copy of the PDF or the expression of interest application forms, please email the teaching and learning enhancement team at tle. Um, at boxhill.edu.au, but I will put that email address in the chat for um, tonight's session as well. Um, also, too, I would um, I would like to um, acknowledge that and respect the traditional custodians whose ancestral lands we are meeting on today. We acknowledge the deep feelings of attachment and relationship of Aboriginal peoples to country. We also pay respects to the cultural authority of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who are present today from other areas of Australia. And the Elga campus is on Wurundjeri territory. So to give you a bit about the course um, is um, upon successful completion, students are awarded with a verifiable Credly micro credential digital badge and accredited with the unit of competency, which is nationally accredited TAE RES 501 Apply Research to Training and Assessment Practice. Credly is a micro-credential hosting site that hosts the largest and most connected digital credential network. They speak a, a global common language of verified knowledge, skills and abilities. And you can click on the hyperlink in the PDF to explore more information about Credly. And if you're not familiar with what a micro-credential is, a micro-credential are mini qualifications that demonstrate skills, knowledge and or experience in a given subject area or capability. Also known as nano degrees, micro-credentials tend to be narrower in range than traditional qualifications like diplomas or degrees. However, they can also be broad in focus rather than specific. So for example, the micro-credential that you'll receive is aligned to the BOYA framework of scholarship and also supported by the um, Vauxhall Institute Research Subcommittee. Uh, when and where? So we will have a new intake each semester and our next intake, which is commencing a little bit late due to the, the timing of this year, um, will commence on the 2nd of August this year. The course runs for approximately three to four months duration. It's a blended delivery on MS Teams and supported with um, student web and also um, some tutorials. And uh, members of this particular course are invited to the Applied Research Community of Practice sessions as well. So in this course, you're probably wondering, well, how am I going to be assessed? And um, you'll be assessed through knowledge, a literature review, a research application, and a research report. The research um, application is the actual application you'll complete to conduct research at Vauxhall Institute. And the literature review that you'll do um, will form part of your research application. You'll be doing a peer review of your research report and part of that information goes into the, the final submission. So all the, the assessment tasks are connected. In the knowledge test, you'll also be discussing how you've disseminated your findings through an informal exchange um, session or, or formal if you choose to do that. Um, the fees and schedules. So for um, non-sponsored participants, it's, a, it's $600 tuition fee, which includes the new digital batch. And the dates that it commences um, is August the 2nd 
will also run on August 9, 16 and 23, on October 18 and November the 1st. So in the beginning in August, we'll have a series of four sessions to get you started and familiarise yourselves to the research process at Vauxhall Institute. And in October and November is where we touch points to see how you're progressing and finalise those um, important reports. In order to make the most of the learning um, resources and um, links that we provide you and to hear your um, teachers and guest presenters, we also highly recommend that you invest in some earphones with an in inbuilt microphone. It certainly makes for a better learning experience. Or earpods or earbuds, um, they work very well as well. You also require reliable internet access and either a desktop or laptop computer or other suitable electronic device. So this course is designed for experienced vet practitioners who hold at the minimum um, the TAE 50116 Diploma of Vocational Education and Training or the TAE 50110 and Training or equivalent in adult education or working towards. You're required to have a minimum of two years full-time teaching experience or minimum four years part-time teaching experience. In order, and in order to navigate the learning and the assessment tasks, you require intermediate digital literacy skills. Upon enrolment, all of our students are required to complete the Digital Literacy for Vet Te Teachers micro-credential short course. In addition, all applicants, both internal and external, are required to complete an expression of interest application form, which I provided to you in the folder um, for this particular channel in the files and um, you'll be just giving us a detail of your proposed application research topic. So that proposed application topic can change. However, if you're being sponsored at Box Hill Institute, you will need to seek permission from your manager and dean if, if you're changing the integrity of your question. Um, all expressions of interest are accepted up until Monday the 12th of July. That's in order to allow us enough time to review your expressions of interest and then commence processing the enrolment document. So you're up and ready to go on the 2nd of August. Um, and you'll be emailing your completed expression of interest application form to the Teaching and Learning Enhancement team at tle at boxhill.edu.au. This particular course is aimed at um, experienced vet practitioners. So our target audience are learners who are self-motivated, autonomous learners, curious about education research and have a proposed research topic and or research question. All research conducted at Vauxhall Institute requires approval from the Vauxhall Institute Research Subcommittee now the research project that you'll be doing as part of this course is really considered quite a small research project and may only use low risk sources of data or methodologies. We will go into this more in the course, but to give you examples of low risk research methods, that includes data reviews that do not name or identify individuals, analysis of existing unit evaluation surveys, analysis of results and feedback from monthly VET course evaluation student satisfaction surveys. So if you're not an employee at Boxhill Institute, you would be analysing similar sources of data at your own registered training organisation. Um, also to analysis of higher ed course results from the Quilt SES or GOSS websites, and we'll give you the links to those in the course. And also um, you can analyse self-reflection. Now, um, there are, these are the, the risk categories as defined at Boxhill Institute. Um, whoops, I've left a typo in there, so sorry about that. Um, but low risk research is research in which there is no foreseeable risk of harm or discomfort, harm to reputation, financial impact, or any foreseeable risk is no more than inconvenience. So that they're the, they're the, that's the, the low risk research um, category. Medium is research that may impact on other Vauxhall Institute staff or students, which includes sensitive information and requires human research ethics committee approval. 
or HREC. Um, and there's a link in there to um, what's involved with HREC. High risk research that will impact Boxall Institute staff or students that includes sensitive information, breaches privacy legislation, does not have human research ethics committee approval, will not be approved. Please also note um, that Boxall Institute does not have its own HREC or Human Research Ethics Committee. And um, the types of information or data that may include HREC, and you can see in particular I've highlighted, um, is in regards to gathering information about human beings through interviewing, surveying, questionnaires, observation of human behaviour. There's also audio, videotaping, administering tests or stimuli, collecting or using human tissue, bone, blood or other body fluids. So um, if, if you wish to um, do any additional interviewing or surveying or questionnaires, in most cases you will require a, a human research ethics committee approval. And as I mentioned, Boxall Institute doesn't have their own HREC, so you will need to ex um, seek that approval externally. And um, to give you an idea, the cost of that currently with um, a company that we recommend called Bellberry is six and a half thousand dollars. So, um, but um, throughout the course, we'll support you to analyse existing data that isn't um, going to require HREC approval to give you a satisfactory outcome in this particular course. So the features of applied research, and particularly in regards to the Boyer framework, as um, the Australian Education Union MEA, multi-enterprise multi agreement, which is the pay scale, requires alignment to the, the Boyer fr framework, uh, scholarship framework. And um, what, why it's been chosen, I imagine, by the AEU is because it's about applying knowledge to find practical solutions to problem in an industry, which is really what vocational education is all about. It's not just enough to have your hypothesis and then a solution. It's about actually putting um, solutions and ideas into practice and testing them. And it's about improving your professional practice as vet educators. Um, it is a creative process that seeks to generate new knowledge and understanding. And you'll need to be using accepted methods and techniques to ensure valid outcomes. And often your results and outcomes can come with commercial value. So applied research in the TAFE sector typically focuses on solving problems for local industries when no existing solution is available, enhancing your professional practice in TAFE and fostering innovation skills and capabilities with your students. So why choose Boxall Institute to study this course? Well, if you're employed at Boxall Institute and on a current contract, you'll be eligible to apply for a sponsored position. Um, so there'll be no cost involved to yourself if, um, if your expression of interest in, is um, successful and supported by your manager and faculty dean. We'll also give you access to Studiosity, which the current students have been using with great success, which will assist you with your writing and grammar and spelling and uh, formatting your reports. We also give you access to Turnitin, which in addition to checking for plagiarism or um, inappropriate referencing of sources of information, it can be used as a handy tool to review your submission prior to submitting for um, any inappropriate referencing. We also give you 24-7 access to learning resources on the Moodle platform, which we at Box Hill Institute call um, uh, Student Web, Box Hill Institute Student Web, and we also provide you with um, tutorials and sessions via MS Teams. This particular course has also been, the development has been supported by the Boxall Institute Research Subcommittee. And um, I'm the Research Integrity Advisor for Vocational Education of the Research Subcommittee. Uh, also too, this course is submitted, uh, supported by the Boxall Institute Applied Research Community of Practice. And also too, we have some fabulous staff at the Boxall Institute Library. They'll give you access to our extensive catalogue database and also a very supportive um, experienced librarians and can assist you with things such as navigating how to reference your sources if you're new to research. So some key dates to consider is um, that the expressions of interest close on Monday the 12th of July 2021. 
Enrolments close on Monday the 26th of July 2021 and this is to ensure that we have sufficient time to have you your enrolment process so you're ready to access student web. Other dates to consider is the course commencement date is Monday the 2nd of August and um, there will be an opportunity to engage in this course in February 2022 date to be confirmed. So now um, thank you for your time and now I'll just take any questions that you may have. And I'll just check the chat as well for this particular um, session and just see if there's any questions in there that I've missed. Okay, so I can't see any um, questions in the chat. So um, I'm opening up the floor to any questions that people may have about the course. And Marie, have people been, have we run this already once or not? Um, this is, this will be the third group I've, I'll put through this course. And uh, what's very exciting is that already two of our alumni who did research for the first time, who completed this course, which recently published in the Research Today magazine by Vetra. So, um, but also too, we do acknowledge in the, in the sponsored diploma of vocational education and training program that the research is not for everyone. So we do offer for, for our staff to complete the diploma without the research unit, however, um, the original course was designed to support your progression up the MEA, um, the pay scale. So without that, um, that would um, reduce your reclassification opportunities. But um, certainly um, research isn't for everyone, but the students that have completed have really enjoyed the journey and um, learned a lot. And our first time and emerging researchers have had great success. How many hours would people need for this? Um, it would depend on the, the, the topic that you choose. Um, I have found that previous students have tended to overthink this particular project and more um, created a question that's more of a master's type report rather than a diploma level report. So um, this course is very much AQF level five. It's on the high end of AQF five. And um, you, you could pass this course with a very well written literature review and um, inspire further inquiry, which is aligned to the, the Boyer um, framework. However, if you wanted to um, do analysis of learning analytics on student web or any learning management systems that you use or um, your unit evaluations, those sort that, you know, net promoter scores, that could take you a bit longer. So the, the, the time of involved in doing this course will depend on the, the type of question and the research methodologies that you choose. But um, it is a it is a, a large diploma level unit. Um, I, I couldn't give you an exact number of hours, but um, it is um, it is a commitment. Yeah. I'd imagine the we've got six weeks of um, four hour, you know, four hour or not three hours, 18 um, then you've got the two weeks following up, 20. You know, I'd be looking at at least the minimum um, to be safe, you would double that, so 50 to 60 hours. But um, everyone's different. It also depends on if you've had research experience before, because some of our um, students have not done referencing or written formal reports. So. It depends if we need to upskill you in how to um, use the Harvard referencing system and also to um, what, you know, how much uh, interaction you require with Studiosity in order to refine your writing. Uh, remember that um, all uh, research conducted at Vauxhall Institute has to be reviewed by the research subcommittee and that goes before a panel. So your writing does have to be of a research um, formal quality and correctly and accurately referenced. But really good questions, Janine. Uh, can you give some examples of topics that have been chosen before? Sure, certainly. Um, so 
the one the, the two articles that were published in research today one was about the need for do graduates of the diploma of early childhood need management soft skills um, so they were looking into and that one was done very much based on a, a strong literature review in that analyzing the course so analyzing uh, documents from box hill institute um, analyzing the training package as well and the requirements of the training package and then identifying um, as part of the course you are required to identify a learning theory or a learning theorist and connect that into your um, research project that's not the requirement of um, the aeu that's a requirement of the unit of competency that you're getting um, to show a um, connection to an educational theory so um, you would then just um, that how they've done it is some people have looked at um, cognition or some people have looked at um, learning theories with you know catering to diverse learners other you know there's quite I give you a, a comprehensive list of all our learning theorists and it's good for you to choose someone that you connect with whether it's Vygotsky or um, Gardner or Bloom you know you know whoever you connect with it's important you connect with your learning theorists but also that it's relevant to your learner cohort so you're all coming from very different backgrounds very different vocational areas and your student cohorts are going to be very diverse as well so you need to review some learning theories and determine what's going to best fit your learners so um, you know that's uh, and so what they've done is they've looked at well who who are our learners what's the problem is that industry has found that not enough graduates have the skills to become centre managers. Um, they've aligned it to a learning theorist in that, well, you know, what learning theorist um, supports the learning of soft skills? And um, they've backed it up with, well, what does industry say? So it might be an industry consultation. What does the training package say? And then they've suggested um, new strategies to improve the course and to improve um, the skills of their graduates to meet industry requirements. So then they've, in some cases, done an, an analysis of what the industry needs are as well. Um, so that's more a theoretical approach, whereas um, a, a project that's currently under review is um, how to minimise the waste of off cuts of timber in the carpentry area um, to be and be more sustainable. So, uh, which is quite different. So then you've got a, that person's researching while well, um, you know, what is sustainability? How much waste is there? What can we do with the waste? So, and then um, they'll use that to improve, um, you know, the, the student's experience, how to be less wasteful, and also to, it would reduce the course overheads, which is a benefit to Boxall Institute and better for the environment, which is even better. So um, there, are, there are a couple of the, the courses. But certainly um, we are in the process with the research subcommittee of putting together a list of the research reports that have been submitted and um, staff are welcome to access that list to make sure we avoid duplication of research. And that's important in the Boyer framework as well, is um, avoid duplication and, um, and also too by having that list, we're supporting dissemination of your findings as well which is really important. It's no, there's no point doing all this great research if we're not sharing it. So any other questions at all? Um, I'm, I'm thinking it'd be pretty hard to just um, identify a question. It is, yes. <laughs> yeah. That can be the, the, the hardest starting point. That's, that's what I'm thinking. It's very, very difficult to, to actually make the question simple enough to be able to do it. That's right. And, th and that's, a, mm. that's a journey you'll go through throughout the course. Yeah. Um, some tips though to help you with putting together your expression of interest yeah. is really narrow down your parameters of what you're discussing. So yeah. um, a tip I've given to some of our other um, applicants is to think, well, now you, you can't disclose information that will give away the identity of your learner group, but or the teachers or whoever you're working with or you know whatever you're reviewing but you could say at a Victorian Institute in Melbourne um, in a course you know and mention the course um, but you wouldn't go down necessarily to the group code or or anything else that would give away who the participants were you can um, you know narrow it down to Victoria rather than 
um, Australia. So you, you're only having to analyse um, local um, data, not, not national data. And also too, then you're not having to analyse global data. That's, that's how you're at risk of getting too big. Um, also too, then the data you'll analyse will be unit evaluations for that particular course, rather than net promoter scores, which might not give you as deeper information. Um, the important thing to know is, which we cover in the course, is that you can only analyse unit evaluations from your own courses as well, not of other teachers. But we, we, we cover all of those sort of details throughout the course for you. So, Amrit, would you use corrections as an example for an area of teaching? Yes, you can. You could say, um, you know, uh, you could say what course? Um, you might not want to say, you'd have to check with, I, I'd imagine there'd be stricter privacy re guidelines in regards to corrections, but you could well, say sure, at a yep. Victorian, you wouldn't have to say it's corrections necessarily, and, you know, but you might want to depending on what your question is, if it's specific to corrections, but, um, you know, you could say at a Victorian TAFE um, in what course that it's you're delivering. Um, and then you may want to describe the cohort without giving away who they are. I'd have to, I'd have to look in. I haven't um, had that issue before, but I can certainly refer anything I'm not confident in to the research subcommittee as well. Hi, Anne Marie. I've just got a okay. question. Sure. Um, in regards to it being passed through the research subcommittee. Mm -hmm. um, if it isn't, can you still uh, pass the unit? No. <laughs> but good question. Um, but what we do is that um, if you're not passed, you're given very comprehensive feedback by the research subcommittee mm -hmm. and, and then helped by myself to reword and improve it. Um, it's often not a major um, I've um, done my best to support you to do a strong application in the first place. It's often quite minor um, tweaks that are required to improve your application. But yeah, you cannot, you can certainly start your literature review, mm -hmm. but if you're going to be conducting research per se, such as analysis of learning analytics or unit evaluations, um, you know, you can look at past assessment tasks, submissions, those sorts of things. Um, you know, if there is any qualitative information in there that identifies someone, you just need to de-identify it. But, um, you know, you can start the literature review straight away. It's just the actual research itself. You can't commence until you have approval. OK, thank you. And yeah, Vanessa, to go back to the question, um, we'll help you write one and if um, you know, just narrow it down. And the biggest thing where I get a lot of the students to start is to think, well, what's the problem? Keep keep to the problem. What's the problem that you're trying to fix? So, um, yeah, I, I know it's really, really hard. It is. To, to me, it's just got to make it to like the, the smallest unit possible. <laughs> like a, that's right. And, uh, and I know that's really hard to do. It is. But we'll, we'll help you through that. Yeah. And as you do your literature review, and we get you to do um, an annotated bibliography. So you'll be starting off by, often you just need to get started. And so we yeah. start you off with, where you've got to select three research sources of information, one related to your educational theory, and two of them related to your vocational area. And you're just going to analyse them and consider, well, why am I using them and how are they helping my question? And how, where am I, where's my potential solution? And that that process in itself will help you to refine your question down. Mm. So the original question you'll put in your expression of interest will change in most cases. Okay. But that's okay. That's okay. Good. Yeah. Just a question, Anne Marie. Kathy here. Is okay. the, is the literature we're referring to Australian, or can it be international? Both. Yeah. And so we can we can yeah so we can extract from anywhere. That's correct. Because with corrections, there's not a lot of good data come, or good literature coming out of Australia, but there's bucket loads from the US. Definitely. So as long as we're allowed to explore outside of, yeah, here, yes, then it just means we can maybe get our teeth into some some good some good stuff. Oh, I highly encourage that because there's some wonderful um, research happening overseas. I'm currently working um, within our team with a, a, a university in Dublin 
and um, yeah. particularly in the applied research space, Canada and those countries are years ahead of Australia in applied research and vocational education. So I think there are some very valuable lessons to be learned from our overseas um, you know, universities and vocational yeah. colleges. So yeah, definitely, I highly encourage that. Beautiful, oh, that's good and, to know. And, I, and also to, thank you, and also to, um, you might find a, you might find a, something that's been done in another industry, but similar, yeah. like you don't have to find an exact example of the exact industry you're in. You might find that, you know, if you're a hairdresser, that there could be something being really well done in um, trades or in yeah. other, but it, as long as it's relevant and you can connect it, yeah. um, you know, because it can be very hard to find it, it, um, exact documents or sources of information on your exact question in your exact context. So yeah, it's a matter of- understood looking for something in a similar context that you yep. can still apply. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. And currency is important. However, you know, there are some, um, you know, some learning theories that haven't changed in a very long time. So, but in the industry, um, I would look for more currency as well. Yep. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Any other questions at all? And Marie, is this um, can it be done as group work or like multiple teachers working on on a group project, or is it individuals only? Uh, they're individual, Adrian. Okay. Um, yeah, they're, it's only they're only small. So the final report that you're going to write in this particular course is two to two and a half thousand words. So it's a very small research report. Um, so that might put a few of your nerves at ease. And it, but although sometimes it can be very hard to write a much more succinct report. It, it's really going to keep you down to the to the important information, um, and um, but this for this particular unit, um, it is too hard to assess and determine who's contributed what in a report that small. So um, no problem. Yeah, keeping them as individual. However, one of the faculties has been very clever, and um, what they've done is they've given all their their teachers from one course um, connected projects so that they can feed into each other and support each other. So if there is a group of you who want to explore similar themes, you'd still need to do your own reports, but it doesn't mean that you can't share your research. Okay, fantastic, thank you. These are great questions, everyone. So thank, keep them coming. Okay. Well, um, whilst you think of any more questions, what's also in the, happening in the background is I'll be running a session a bit later in the year on how to uh, write a research poster. And um, what I'd love to aim for is that have a space somewhere on our space or on a um, student web where um, not just people that are doing this course, but other people doing research at Boxall Institute can put together a research poster to showcase what we're doing. And that's a great way for us to collect data and information of the research happening at Boxall Institute. And once again, avoid that um, duplication of research. So that'll be in one of the community of practice sessions. Another community of practice session that we'll offer will be Annie and I sharing our research journey, um, looking in the principles of universal design for learning. And also to, I'll be putting in links to, there's some, a great webinar series put out by Vetra for emerging researchers in the vocational space. So. I'll be um, putting out the links to those. And I do encourage um, everyone interested in research to explore the Avetra website. And we have a corporate membership, which um, you should really make the most of. And there's lots of free research data there as well. Uh, yes, um, I've just downloaded the expression of interest. Yeah. Um, it's in PDF form. How do I um, change it to a Word document so I can fill it out? Is you can't, are you able to, do you have Adobe? Are you able to type into the PDF? I do have Adobe, but I'm not sure how to do it. Should I, do I save it and yeah. then, and then say, okay. All That's right. correct. Yeah. 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 Make sure you save them because I have been frustrated in the past when you do some great work in a PDF and mm -hmm. then you can't save it or you think you've saved it and you've lost it all. So mm -hmm. actually now, thank you for bringing up that Katerina. I'll just put into the chat. Um, for everyone, those particular documents, and also a copy of the um, of the uh, PDF that I've shown you tonight, that um, of the presentation tonight. Oh, thank you. 
One thing I should say, it says applicant mobile. In corrections, we can't take mobiles into the prisons, so mm -hmm. you no point phoning them. Oh, okay. Um, still pop it in though, if that's all right, because yep. we, in case we need to contact you um, when you're not on site. Okay. Yep. But um, good point. Thanks for bringing that up, Stephen. Um, now I'll just bring up these documents for you. Won't be a moment, and I'll pop them in the chat for you. So here's the um, PDF of tonight's information session. And as I mentioned, there are hyperlinks in here to the Human Research Ethics Committee um, website and also to, um, to Credly as to who Credly are and other relevant sites. And now I'll just put in the expressions of interest as well for you, won't be a moment. Go. Might be a moment. And um, what I'll do though, um, I will pop a word version in uh, for you, but um, as well. But please submit in a PDF, and particularly when you're getting signatures, it's easier for for you to get approval from the deans um, by, uh, in a PDF. Actually, what I'll do is I'll, I'll put them in a bit later. I'm just not confident in those versions, but they are in the files tab. So I'll just show you now where you can locate them. Might be a minute. I might be able to put them into the chat as well when I find them in the, in the um, Teams for you. Okay, so if we go into general here, and then um, you'll see in files up the very top here. And then um, here is the information session presentation. And also to, I'll just click on here and see if I can add them into the chat. No, I might just copy. Actually, I'll copy the links for you and pop them in the chat and that'll take you straight to the documents. That might be easier. The links um, in there now as well for you to the expression of interest form. Okay, so um, are there any questions on the expression of interest form? Did you want me to show you that before we finish this evening? Um, the biggest tip I can give you with the expression of interest, if you're seeking a sponsored position, um, you do need approval from your manager and your faculty dean. They, um, your deans want to know what research activities are occurring. So, um, and please allow sufficient time to get their signatures. That, that's not something that you can often get in a hurry. They're, so um, I would allow at least a week to um, get, get time to get permission, um, dean signature on your expression of interest. Um, please don't leave it to the last minute. So that's um, a big tip for you all. Um, and yeah, the, the course is designed so that you'll have a, um, I have had feedback from a couple of students that have been ab able to complete the course just purely on the information provided on the shell, working their way through. Um, and if you're an experienced researcher, you may find um, you're able to, to navigate the course in a very self-directed manner. However, the sessions um, provide you with a lot more detail and also to, I can know, you know, refer you to extra support such as when to go to the library if you're new to research and how to use Studiosity. So um, there is lots of support for you. 
and um, the the staff from the Boxall Institute Library, but particularly Jill Perkins and Jane Adams, um, have been helping a lot of our students with their referencing and how to find um, hard to find topics. So, you know, really make the most of. You're not alone. You've really got an amazing support system here at Boxall Institute. Okay. Sorry, Anne Marie. Will we be? What? Yeah. One more question. Will um for many of us who have expressed interest at corrections, we're based either in the western suburbs or um regional, so we don't actually live at, at Edgar Road. Some of us, like me, have never been there. Yeah. Um, would we be disadvantaged if we can't access the physical library, or are they uh, are, are these librarians you recommend accessible via email? No, you're not disadvantaged at all. In fact. Um, you know, last year I I hardly met any of the students because we're all in COVID. Okay. So yeah, uh, they're very accessible. They use MS okay, Teams. Okay, good to know. Yeah, and um, once you're once you've done a bit of a well, actually the early stage of the course is actually with the library with um, Jane Adams, and I highly yep. recommend even if you've done a bit of research before that you don't miss those sessions because. Um, learning to navigate the catalogue can save you a lot of research time and also to there's a citing function in there to help you with your referencing and also to you should never have to pay for a peer reviewed article or a document. We have a very extensive database and catalogue at Boxall Institute and it's really worth a visit to the Boxall Institute library staff to see how to navigate that and use it more efficiently. I'm st I'm still learning how to use it. It's quite, um, you need quite advanced searching skills in a lot of cases, yeah. but um, it's all there. It's just a matter of you having to engage and uh, take the time to, to learn how to navigate um, that particular catalogue. Great, thank you. But yeah, you know, you're not, and I think that's, you know, a positive that's come out of COVID is that um, it's great to see more of our corrections staff and staff from remote locations. It's meant for a much more inclusive cohort at, um, in this particular course. So welcome to all our remote learners. Okay, anything else at all? Any more questions? Well, look, I'm, I'm, I'll be the, all going well, I'm the main teacher for the course. Um, this will be the third group we've put through the course. There's been a lot of lessons learned, particularly with the first group, and uh, we've refined some of the processes and set up a few extra support systems for you. And uh, the, as uh, Vanessa hinted at earlier, I think the toughest part for you will be all determining what your research question is going to be, but the course process will help you to refine that as well. And uh, it's, a, it's the way of the future for vocational education. We really need to get more involved with applied research and, can, and make those connections with industry in particular and, and solve real world problems. So um, welcome to this journey and um, feel free to email the TLE team um, if you're having trouble downloading the expression of interest form. Once the EOIs close on the 12th of July, we will notify you of your outcome either way within a couple of days and then um, um, commence the application and enrolment process. Um, we're not sure um, how many applicants we're going to have at this stage, and the, but there is a there is a cap. But um, we'll keep you abreast of the progress um, as it um, through this particular channel. We'll we'll do updates, but you will be individually notified of your application status um, around the 14th of July. Okay, well, I'll stop recording now.